Welcome to the 85th video by Pale Blue Thoughts. Have you ever eaten a dinosaur tikka or butter dinosaur or dinosaur steak? No? Would you eat it if given a choice? Well, whatever your answer may be, I can tell you that if you are an omnivore that is non-vegetarian Indian English, there is a high chance that you have consumed dinosaurs in your life. Feeling cringy? Watch the entire episode to find out what I am talking about. Cluck cluck! Let's get going! Twenty years ago, near the border between Belgium and the Netherlands, an amateur fossil hunter named Martin van Linther picked up a featureless block of rock the size of a pack of cards. Though he didn't know it at that time, the little slab contained a tiny and perfect skull from the oldest direct relative of modern birds ever discovered. A fowl that walked the earth with the dinosaurs. The animal, affectionately dubbed the Wonder Chicken by the international team of scientists that analyzed the fossil, lived 66.7 million years ago just 700,000 years before the asteroid impact that killed off all non-avian dinosaurs. Named Astrionis in a paper published in Nature, the species known from fossil of its hind limbs in addition to its skull has features similar to both ducks and chickens, suggesting it was related to the shared ancestor of both the groups. Asterionis provided scientists with the clearest glimpse yet of what modern birds were like at the point of time when T. rex and triceratops were still alive. For decades, paleontologists' only fossil link between birds and dinosaurs was Archaeopteryx, a hybrid creature with feathered wings but with teeth and long bony tail of a dinosaur. Archaeopteryx lived 150 million years ago along with the other dinosaurs such as T. rex, Velociraptors and Stegosaurus. In the 1990s, an influx of new dinosaur fossils from China revealed a surprise with the discovery of Cynosauropteryx. Though many of these fossils lacked wings, they had feathers. Cynosauropteryx could have been the first bird to take flight. Two years later, we discovered another species in Antarctica called the Vegavis II. The discovery of these new intermediary species which filled in the spotty fossil record triggered a change in how paleontologists conceived of the dinosaur to bird transition. Feathers, one thought unique to birds, must have evolved in dinosaurs long before birds developed. So how do we know one species is related to others? We know it from their anatomy and the characteristics that they share. We know that we are closely related to chimpanzees there is a 96% resemblance in anatomy, characteristics and genetics. Having an opposable thumb is one of the striking characteristics that exists between us. Dinosaurs were evolved from a species of reptiles called Archosauria. There are many species and subspecies on that chain, but we will focus our attention to a special branch called Theropoda or Theropods. We all know of one theropod made famous by the film Jurassic Park. The villain of that movie, the Tyrannosaurus Rex or T-Rex for short. Now was T-Rex just a big chicken? Not quite. Let us see why. How do we know that birds were evolved from dinosaurs? We know that from the anatomy of their hands and the presence of wishbones. Do chickens have hands you ask? Next time you eat a chicken, look at their wings. Clearly, you can see the connection. They all have three-fingered hands. Wishbones are another feature that are commonly found in only theropods and birds. They give strength to the flight muscles. They are similar to our own collarbones. Whereas we have two separate collarbones, in birds they have joined together as one. Another feature that is common to theropods and birds are hollow bones. Break open a chicken bone and you can see this feature which lightens the load of the birds which enable them to fly. 
birds and T-Rex share some of the same genetic information. So it is true to say that birds and T-Rex are related. It is even true to say that birds are the closest living relative to T-Rex even though they aren't that closely related. In the scheme of animal classification, T-Rex and other tyrannosaurs as well as chickens and all other birds all fit into the suborder Theropoda. Theropods are a large and diverse group of animals that have hollow bones and three-toed limbs in common. Yup, tyrannosaurs had feathers. Feathers have already been found in two species and scientists suspect they were present somewhere on the bodies of all tyrannosaurs for at least part of their lives. Within the Theropodia, there are a large number of subgroups. One is Tyrannosauroidea that includes T-Rex and all of his cousins. Another is Maniraptoriforms that includes chickens and all other birds. These two groups split apart a long long time ago, way back in the Jurassic period. Pretty much every evolutionary biologist and paleontologist long time ago came to the conclusion that birds are descended directly from dinosaurs. And chicken of course are birds. Today it has been generally accepted by scientists that birds are not descended from dinosaurs but in fact are dinosaurs. Around 66 million years ago there was a catastrophe that affected the whole world. Scientists are fairly certain that the actual event was a huge asteroid or comet, perhaps 10 miles wide, smashing into the Gulf of Mexico. In a very short period of time, referred to by scientists as the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction Event, over three quarters of the living species on Earth were wiped out. Many insects, mammals, fish, plants and lizards were suddenly gone. Almost every large animal disappeared, including T-Rex and every one of the other dinosaurs, except for one small group of smallish theropods living on the southern continents, the birds. Afterwards, the few remaining birds and other animals that survived spread across the world and evolved into the species we have today. One bird that evolved in Asia was the red jungle fowl and chickens are the domestic version of that bird. A bird didn't just evolve from a T-Rex overnight, but rather the classic features of birds evolved one by one. First bipedal locomotion, then feathers, then a wishbone, then more complex feathers, then wings. The end result is a relatively seamless transition between dinosaurs and birds, so much so that you can't just draw an easy line between these two groups. And once those avian features were in place, the birds took off. Though most people might name feathers or wings as a key characteristic distinguishing birds from dinosaurs, the group's small stature is also extremely important. New research suggests that bird ancestors shrank fast, indicating that the smaller size was an important and advantageous trait, quite possibly an essential component in bird evolution. That shrinkage sped up once bird ancestors grew wings and began experimenting with gliding flight. The advantage of being pine size helped them as bird ancestors moved to trees, a useful source of food and shelter. Though large animals can glide, true flight powered by beating wings requires a certain ratio of wing size to weight. Birds needed to become smaller before they could ever take to the air for more than a short glide. In 2008, Arkat Abzanow, a biologist at Harvard University, was studying alligator eggs. Since alligators descend from a common ancestor with dinosaurs, they can provide a useful evolutionary comparison to birds. Despite their appearance, birds are more closely related to alligators than lizards are. Abzanow was studying alligators' vertebrae but what stuck him most was the bird-like shape of their heads. Alligator embryos looked quite similar to chickens. Fossilized skulls of baby dinosaurs show the same pattern. They resemble adult birds. With those two observations in mind, Abazanov had an idea. Perhaps birds evolved from dinosaurs by arresting their pattern of development early on in life. To test the theory, 
Abzano, along with Mark Norrell, a paleontologist at the American Museum of Natural History in New York, and other colleagues collected data on fossils from around the globe, including ancient birds such as Archaeopteryx and fossilized eggs of developing dinosaurs that died in the nest. They tracked how the skull shape changed as dinosaurs morphed into birds. Over time, they discovered the face collapsed and the eyes, brain and beak grew. In short, birds resemble tiny infantile dinosaurs that can reproduce. This process known as pedomorphosis is an efficient evolutionary route. Rather than coming up with something new, it takes something you already have and extends it. Scientists can never precisely decipher how birds evolved from dinosaurs or which set of features was essential for that transformation. But with the intersection of three fields, evolution, genetics and developmental biology, they can now begin to explore how specific features might have come about. One particularly interesting feature is the beak, a remarkable structure that birds use to find food, clean themselves, make nests and care for the young. Abzano theorizes that birds' widespread success stems not just from their ability to fly, but from their amazing diversity of beaks. In modern birds, two bones, known as the premaxillary bones, fuse to become the beak. That structure is quite distinct from that of dinosaurs, alligators, ancient birds and most other vertebrates, in which these two bones remain separate, shaping the snout. Specifically, small changes in how genes are regulated likely drove both the initial creation of the beak, which evolved over millions of years, and the diverse shape of the bird's beaks, which can change over just a few generations. Abzano's researches on beak showed that the same forces that shape microevolution, that is, minor alterations within species, also drive macroevolution the evolution of whole new features and new groups of species. So there you have it. What you are enjoying on your plate when you eat a chicken is not just a chicken but a real dinosaur. Those little colored creatures that you have in cages, those little creatures that you put a water ball out during summers, those grey pigeons who sit on your balcony and poop, those black winged crows that you call to eat the food of your ancestors are all little dinosaurs that once ruled this earth. So treat them with a little more respect please. They might not snap your head off like a velociraptor would and that is only because they underwent a natural selection and became docile just like you did. So the next time you call your chickens little dinosaurs, you can be sure that you are being absolutely correct. Well I hope you enjoyed this episode. Now let me go and have some dinosaur samosas with green chutney. Until next time, it's bye bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.